told him that I had been suffering from um, depression and drinking and not um, trying to comfort myself. And oh, I can't let him take my soul. No, 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 no. See, we was cool right before I hit your fist. Hello my beauties, if it's your first time ever coming across this channel, my name is Zona Davani and you're welcome here. Please become part of the family by simply hitting the subscribe button down below and the notification bell next to it so you don't miss a single new video from my channel. And to my returning subscribers, my anointed beauties, welcome back. It's lovely to see you again. I've been on this channel for two years now. I've been sharing openly about my journey with Christ, what I'm learning, uh, sharing also testimonies here and there in story times or in passing in vlogs. But I've just realized that I've never really shared my full journey into coming to Christ. I haven't shared my salvation story as a standalone video and I've been convicted this week to actually do it. It's been lingering for two weeks in my heart now to actually sit down and do this so today i finally made the time so here we are i only talked about my salvation in passing in an assumptions about me video but i feel like i need to share with you this journey in case one of you is going through some of the things that i've been through myself in my walk with the lord it's been filled with ups and downs so i'm sharing each and every last detail about it i don't know how long this video is going to be quick disclaimer i am not a pastor i am a child of god who is serving in my little corner so don't expect a preaching a special preaching this is my personal account another disclaimer is that i haven't prepared anything for this conversation it's just an open conversation if a scripture comes to mind and i don't know it off by heart i will paraphrase and add the actual full details here on screen let's get straight into the story and interestingly enough i'm feeling a little nervous about it and that's how i know that this is going to help somebody the enemy is trying to make me feel a little shy and this is something i've been delivered from i think another reason for me to feel this way is because i'm so touched today there's been a lot of things that have been reminding me of how far i've come with the lord and how he has not given up on me so i'm a little emotional because of that but otherwise i am i'm filled with joy in my heart <laughs> but when i was thinking about this i had to reflect back i had to think about the very ups and downs that i'm going to be talking about i'm filled with gratitude and also a big hurt in my heart that i didn't choose christ sooner you know <laughs> but then again i feel like i needed to go through everything so that i can come here and have a testimony that someone can relate to so enough about the yada yada let's get straight into the business so i'm a last born in a family of four children when i was younger i think at around five to the ages of my early teens i suffered from seizures um so bad that it would happen randomly there would not be a temperature or anything like that that alerts the people around me that i was going to have a seizure i do remember my mom um and i going to doctors when i was young like one doctor to the next okay i'm not supposed to cry so early on <laughs> in that video uh, but yeah just thinking about that it's, it's just one of those things that have been shoved back so my mom tried everything went to every doctor that was recommended because it was not a nice thing i don't remember much about the actual episodes what what i would feel or what would be happening with me at the time but i do remember us going to the different doctors and the different places that she took me to so she was really frustrated about that that her, her last one is suffering so much so she went to different doctors and sometimes she would even go to like traditional healers um, to try and get me some help. I remember actually a time when she took me somewhere and we all got cut like these double cuts um, across all the joints of our bodies. I remember that because it was so painful <laughs> because the lady would cut and then put something black. We'd go to all sorts of places, would go to churches as well. I remember this other one as well being a Christian church. But apparently there was a prophetess from that home. This is all happening in the former trans guy. The, the woman in that home used to be a prophetess, but she passed away and the church continues. In, there's a lot of pictures of the woman in the place, but they do pray to Jesus Christ and, and God, the Holy Trinity. Um, she even took me to this other very famous one with 
the logo i remember the tea there and she would just take me everywhere where someone says there's something that helps and i fully understand that my mom at the time she was in her 30s roughly my age or even a little bit older with this major concern so she was trying everything to get my help and nothing was helping at the time then in my village i grew up in a village by the way and then in my village there was a church that arrived in a tent right i'm just going to share every last detail every encounter that i feel has led up to me every significant encounter with the holy spirit on a reference everything in case you're wondering why am i taking it so far back a tent arrived it was um i think it was the faith mission yes it was faith mission that was the only time that a church of that nature had been to my village there's a lot of churches like traditional denominational churches that have been there for a while where you wear uniforms and all that but not the kind of church that talks about salvation that preaches about salvation and people pray in tongues the full moon tea of being in christ so everyone was talking about the church i was quite young at the time i think i was about 10 at the stage i don't remember the years correctly i'm just you know just rushing through it to get to today so when i heard about the church there was a whole buzz around it even on tv people were getting healed now with the salvation thing and gonzo cindy so you know and gonzo zomoya that was the, the 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 vibe about it a lot of people were skeptical about it but a lot of people were enthusiastic as well about it i think in my village it was just the the first time that the concept of sal of salvation was being introduced so i heard about these miracles of people walking up from wheelchairs and i immediately thought about my situation the seizures and um at, at some stage my mom was told by some doctor that i'm going to be epileptic all my life and that didn't sit well with me when when i heard them talk about it nothing was ever like brought to me in like in a formal manner that while you are suffering from this we have to take you to those places i would overhear it when they are talking and my mom would comfort me when going to a doctor and just tell me we're going to get you checked so when i heard about this i didn't say well you see this thing i've been struggling with i believe that if i go there i'm going to be healed no i just thought to myself and i was a very deep child growing up i remember i was such a loner and just i would think very deep thoughts and serious things and i would feel a lot of things that were happening around me you know when someone passes away at home i would really feel the depth of it i wouldn't be like a kid just hear about it and then move on i would continue to ask the deep questions about it so where do they go so when i heard about this church and the miracles i told myself deep in my heart i believed in my heart of hearts that i would also get healed from the no i will never go to another doctor again for the rest of my life because this thing i'm gonna go to the tent i'm gonna do whatever they tell me to do and i will be healed forever <laughs> i go to the tent we ask my family for permission because revival tents would always take place at night and at home we are serious about our curfew at seven o'clock we all pray together as a family and everyone goes to sleep my grandmother doesn't compromise about prayer at seven but we are methodist we are not born again so that's why there's um a certain excitement not that a methodist person cannot be born again but that was not the preaching it was a separate thing to go to this now pentecostal um salvation church we asked for permission and thankfully our parents um my grandmother at the time and grandfather because my mom was working um in the city while we are in the village allowed us to go to the church me my sister and my cousin who is about the same age as my sister my sister four years older than me and the cousin five years older than me so we went to that church and i knew deep in my heart what i wanted to get out of the church we get there we are praying we are singing everyone is singing and they pay special attention to children we brought us to the front of the church and we prayed there and someone preached i remember it was an old man he preached that if you want healing from a disease jesus christ can heal you forever and i immediately knew that was my cue <laughs> oh wow i 
rushed to the front we were told to lift our hands up and pray everyone was just praying you know and that's actually where my love for intent the, the keyboard the special intent the keyboard it started from me because that was my first introduction to um the holy spirit field church environment and and praying in tongues and being completely soaked in the presence of god so we lift up our hands because we're told to lift up our hands everyone is praying praying in the holy spirit praying in tongues and we are told that well to you you just can simply say hallelujah jesus you call out the name of jesus if you don't know how to pray or you can just pray to god to heal you whatever it is that you need healing from and i kept saying to him jesus christ heal me heal me jesus so that i don't have any seizures ever again and i will praise you for the rest of my life and i'm so young and i'm already bugging you like okay if you do this for me then you're gonna have me for life you know do you remember going home and being convinced that i'm healed forever all i have to do is just live for this jesus christ that's all that that's all that i need to do to pay back <laughs> for what he had done for me and honest to god in my heart i have never ever never ever had another seizure ever again till today i'm 35 years old now i've never had a seizure from someone that a doctor had said i will be epileptic for life i never had a seizure we continued with the church um when the um, revival was there um and then the church left there was a family that was connected to the church which i believe the whole entire tent revival came through um but the church um my family was not supportive of me going to a separate church from the family church and i could understand why because as a child at the time it's so easy for a child to get wormed into something else and to be quite honest the family was very different from the rest of the community in that they were not taking part in ancestral worship so they were not attending those things so it was not a family that everyone immediately warms up to because a lot of the people also didn't know much about them in their lives so in the church we were told about the lifestyle of being a born again christian we were explained to what sin is and what things constitute sin and growing up like in those during those days me and my sister would keep each other in check that okay as in a cheeky we don't um chat back from our parents or we do not still uh but we still continued with our church quite similar uh 10 commandments and all that but in terms of the actual uh, prayer life um that i now um subscribe to um i didn't experience that at my family ch at my family church um I, over the years i started to forget honestly about um the that particular church and this kind of relationship and friendship with jesus the understanding of the presence of the holy spirit i, I forgot all about that but i did continue to pray i continued to do the lord's prayer with my family and just believing in my heart that jesus christ is lord and he healed me um fast forward to my teenage years just added an extra life because it's getting dark anyway so life goes on i move on with my life not much of a connection now with salvation and the type of church that i had been introduced to to or the relationship that i had come to know of with christ i was just not following that up but i was very involved in church like sketches sunday school everything i was in each and every one of those things now in my teens my sister passed away uh my my oldest sister that is she's born in 81 she passed away when she was about to, to turn 22 and i was 15 and i was so heartbroken um me and my sister look so much alike well me and my sisters uh we look alike with all three of uh, all three of us look alike um we did everything together she was a heavy influence to me till today she had such a beautiful taste in music very influential in my life dress sense um all these things like um she had an interest in pr and radio so we used to play all these tv interview things at home um she had an interest in magazines in beauty so yeah she was very influential in my life and uh, we talked about everything all the things that we couldn't talk about me and my mom 
so she would pass away now at a time when we were all staying together in East London with my mom um, I literally sank into yeah if I had a name for it at the time I would say I sank into a depression because wow the grief was just insane to see my mom going through the grief was the worst experience for me I was just thinking because this is the person I was sharing a bed with we we're sharing a room we were staying in a shack at the time I think it was a two-room shack uh, me and her were sharing a, a bed and my mom was just sleeping in her own bed so imagine she goes to she goes to school, she was in varsity at the time. She was just about to graduate, by the way. Um, now, she goes somewhere, she doesn't come home. And if she goes to school, she falls sick and she doesn't come back. They take her to a hospital, she never comes back. So I got, I sank into this really, really dark place. Like, it was horrible, it was bad. And I remember in high school, I had this friend of mine her name is JK, so I recently reconnected with her. Well, we see each other, but we had like a proper date a few weeks ago. Um, she said to me, well, um, I know a place that we can go to. Let's just go to church. Um, you cry it out there. You, you'll see how things go. And I go there and instantly I feel, as we are praying there, I feel this sudden urge to just cry and just release everything. And I feel the peace start to overcome me and you know, it was just insane. It was supernatural how I felt at that hour, you know, from a place of just being terribly sad and uh, losing hope in life. And then to this place of knowing that I have a place, I belong, I'm a child of God and he loves me dearly and he is comforting me. You? Wow, you guys. What's the beauty you know today is just <laughs> it's just something else wow so i just felt this um, um peace overcome me and continued you know to seek this peace to seek this understanding of this christ and i would walk from my my township to the church and interestingly the church that i go to now though it's no longer the same pastors and all that it was that very same building that god delivered me from the grief and depression that i was going through after losing my sister again my sister who is still here with us that's the one that i actually went to that church with my sister Nondwe, was was attending those cell meetings with me we were together in it and we we're healing together we'd sing the worship songs when we get home and we'd pray and make our mom pray the way we pray <laughs> I, I i don't know how to express this without offending people that go to the kind of church that my mom goes to or used to go to to even in terms of the prayer it was very different I'm sorry to say if you feel offended well I'm sorry but it was different it was a different culture of prayer and you know just um, leaning into scripture more and getting to know God more instead of just praying for the surface level things and just getting a deeper understanding of his ability to heal us you know of his um, ability to transform our lives of him having the power to just make everything bearable you know and to understand that he has not forsaken us for the fact that we have lost this girl you know and things will change for the better for us i feel like the messaging that was getting at that we were getting at the time was so timely for us and whatever we would get from that we poured back to my mom and we, we we began to thrive to be quite honest you know we were in a really good place spiritually and i started to have hope again and you know just yeah there's the sudden levels of grief that you get to where you like i suck how about i just joined this person that i've lost you know um so we we all began to to heal together to hold each other up and um we, we we survived that and we began to to have hope again and that was such a beautiful place to be in and then again okay <laughs> well this is about in fact this story must be about how many times i have backslided <laughs> because this has been 
backsliding for the most part of my life and i thank god that i'm finally here now where i am solid and i just know that no more wins are going in my life i'm gonna be here in christ it must find me here and go sing and over the years i begin to just again drift away from the church oh another issue that was there at the time was that i couldn't attend sal we would attend at some weeks but my mom started to get really unhappy with two young girls going to cell meeting and cell meeting is in the evening you know it just became uh, then we stopped to go there and uh, my sister would go to to church with my mom and i completely abandoned the church i think for a good uh two years and as a child that is a lot to be a child that doesn't go to church but i would just say to my mom yo i and they would go and my mom is not a forceful person like she's very reasonable even with the things that with the time that she would say we're not going it would purely be on the basis that it's at night so she would let me not go if i don't want to go a varsity i was still like in church and then not in church now this is at the time i'm still going to the same church that my friend in high school introduced me to but uh you know i'm starting to papa nyana and all of that but i still do go to church and i ended up being pregnant with my son and during that pregnancy i told myself that i am going to recommit my life to christ i start to pray all the time this time not connected to any church i'm just doing it at home listening to worship music every day i secretly accept jesus christ um uh, while watching tv i remember at the time it was the um, 2010 soccer world cup here in the country yeah i tell myself that yeah this is it but at the same time i'm still continuing dating the father of my child because you know we grew up together and i still believe in my heart that yeah this is gonna this is gonna work but yeah after the shock of the pregnancy we are back to just living right and then i become this work young working adult this time i'm in east london i'm staying with my sister my sister starts going back to church a different church now gets born again i also get born again there seems to be like this major connection connection between me and my sister when we backslide we backslide when we go back and we, we just influence each other into um being on fire for the lord we are back into that but she is more serious in it now than i am i am this young professional excited with my radio job i have loads of friends i'm a socialite i'm i'm cool and with it at the time that was the time i was um i'd be in church even like for friday service but i would be eating while in church to go out and drink and party with my friends like i'm there and i'm fully present but at the same time I'm like okay well once i'm done with this i get to go out and party with my friends i remember a particular friday actually i was reminded of this because there's another comedy show coming up i remember i was leaving church excited to go to the, the comedy show and join my friends and drink and party my life away and on my drive there and god just starts to say to me is this really the life you want to be living and i'm like well yeah you forgive my sins so i'm gonna party and do whatever i want you got me right um but i knew deep in my heart of hearts that that was not pleasing to god but i was continuing to do this and i would do it all the time sometimes it would get to this embarrassing state where i had been drinking and partying with my friends um but when we drive home i'm in a state i am bawling my eyes out i am crying and i'm crying out for god i have my gospel music playing in the background so my friends actually got to a point where they like oh god you know and we know you're gonna get to that place and um the next day i would be so embarrassed because everyone would think that that's me being drunk and that's how i get drunk i cry and i want to pray and to be quite honest i was feeling so much anguish and hurt on the inside because i knew i was living a double life that was not pleasing to god and when i used to drink a, a call like party and and all that the hangovers i would get those are not normal those were abnormal i would literally be sick and will have 
drank maybe the same thing with the girls and and all that but for me it's going to be extra special kind of sickness and i would be so depressed i would be so depressed i think last year i actually learned that um alcohol is a depressant and it put everything into perspective for me why i would feel that way every time i drank and of course i believe now as well that the call of god i would always been with me that's why it made um that shame a little bit extra and that sickness extra because i knew the truth i knew the life that i needed to be living you know i knew the life of healing instead of the life of numbing there was a lot of numbing that was taking place um there was a lot of uh, traumas that i had experienced um as a woman dating and you know just a lot of life things that was that i was numbing at the time i knew what was right and what was wrong for me um the biggest and scariest factor in my in my drinking was knowing that my father uh, growing, was not a part of my life growing up my mom and dad um, got divorced while she was pregnant with me was an alcoholic like a bad bad alcoholic losing his jobs type of alcoholic so in my drinking sprees i knew that genetically i had that in me from my father because um addiction i've come to learn that it it, it does um um get it does get transferred um if your your parents are addicted to something you are also most likely to be an addict so Going through that, I watched myself become the person that at the time I despised the most. And it would hurt me so much that, okay, here is this person who I feel is the one person who disappointed me the most. And I know the reason behind him being that person, but I'm slowly becoming him myself, ruining my life. And um, um, most of the things um, would happen and i will have been shielding my son from it all because um um i'll be staying with my son but i would always cover my tracks um with the partying and all that i always make arrangements for it but i felt like wow um i'm a single mother what would happen of my child if i continue to be this but at the same like i'm spending a lot of time with my child i'm growing up with my child but at the same time i have this fear that i'm not uh, i might just lose it all because of what i do when he is not seeing me and in case you're wondering why i'm sharing this when i have a child whom i had consulted from um i'm raising my son on a perfect understanding and truthful and honest manner of um these things i i do talk about it now from time to time he will ask me so the partying and all that because i always tell him that well i've partied she would he will ask me questions um so don't worry about that if you were worried about it i do talk about it um openly with him i'm gonna get to a boiling point the one last binge that <laughs> threw me right on the feet of jesus christ now i'm dating this guy it's been a while and um, I knew deep down because of the lifestyle that he was living that he's not the kind of guy I would marry No, no definitely not because I'd always known that um, If I'm to get married, I'm gonna marry a man of God Always known it, it my, my friends, I hope not to get a comment on this Even at the time I was living a double life I always told myself that I'm not gonna marry someone who drinks And at some stage I'm also gonna stop and I'm gonna be this godly woman <laughs> Um, so we broke up and, and it was on my terms and I fell apart from that fell apart and I started to drink some more like some more that was my place of um, refuge and comfort at the alcohol that's where um, I ran to I, I would party a lot I remember this particular time this one last time I've forgotten some of the details you know that's the thing when you heal you heal like you, you move on with your life you don't sit around and wallow in the past mistakes that you have made but I remember this particular time I was partying with some friends this time I'm staying in, in King Williamstown this is about 2016 now um, I was partying in East London a lot having a great time and then on the drive back on the end to back to King Williamstown um, I'm so drunk hey I can barely remember the trip I can't remember how I lived and which state was I in when I left but when I asked the friends the next day I, I seemed 
pretty pretty normal but i don't remember i blacked out it had been a thing now for me to start blacking out actually after those um drinking sprees though i looked normal my, my mind is completely out i remember now i'm driving on the n2 i would literally just open my eyes when my car is about a few inches from getting into the rails and as those rails that are protecting you from getting over and i mean from from tipping over into a cliff on the other side i remember like i would i would wake up just in time and i would hear god say to me wake up every time and i would wake up and i would try to keep the car straight um but I, that, that's all i remember and then the next scene is me waking up and just to check my car and my car is parked properly at the spot that I park it right in front of the garage at the house I was staying in and it's it's not put inside but the gate is closed the car is sitting there straight and I had to wake up and go to work that day I think it was during the holidays because my son was not there I wouldn't get a chance for my drinking sprees um, during the week and when he's around I would only have my chance when he's out for the holidays with his grandmother my mom and then I would do that now this time i think it was school holidays because he was not around i woke up and i had to go to work but i was a mess i just started crying for an hour asking god how did i get here how did i get here and just full of shame and fear and also gratitude to god that he didn't let me die that night i don't know how many times that the, the car was so close to just tipping over um so I, I was filled with gratitude and also shame that i had allowed myself to get to that you know what's interesting about me throughout these seasons someone who's not close to me might not even know i was going through this because i have always been one to look put together <laughs> so even during those times no one knew what i was going through like at work no one knew uh, because I, I worked in a, such a, a youthful environment to drink and to party was you know a casual thing everyone was doing it so no one knew the depth of it for me and um in my spaces it was a casual conversation but yo solo yo 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 and um yeah, even before that gay during this relationship that um, really took me to the grave, I was still going to church. Uh, you know, when I look back, I, I will always chase back a church that I was going to, actually. I, I will always chase back and um, I know for sure that God has never left me. And I, a hunger deep within me has always been seeking God, even at the times I was living that double life. But I do remember like constantly always having a church that I belong to. But the issue was just being in sin while still going to church and yeah that has been that was that was the issue <laughs> when i look back now and having learned all these things i've learned um i had a deep problem of feeling unworthy and i would do anything um to belong to a circle of friends or like to have people in my life such that I compromised myself a lot, myself a lot along the way, and I was, I've always been a really like I was such a hurt person, and like the deep disappointment and uh, disappointment in in my father just manifested itself in so many ways, and Christ is 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 that one comforting and consistent um, person in my life that has been with me throughout the seasons but i was just running away from that comfort for what i do not know anyway after that um one night after that night of just almost you know just getting into an accident um i cried and um i remember just asking a friend of mine um i think a colleague at the time about their church and um i started to go to the church and i remember um that particular first time when I, I went to that church I got the I was still smelling of alcohol like that stench from um, having vodka the previous night and then waking up even if you wash you still you still smell it I remember just going there and the pastor in the church um, is always in church um, 
the pastor in that church is always literally always in church so i got there he was there i said to him no i don't want to talk i just want to pray and he allowed me to walk and i remember just um i was supposed to have been in in in, in, in oh i did go to the office and then i asked for time out because i was hung over and i was smelling and it was not nice so um i remember i just being on that altar and just crying and praying and crying and praying um the pastor they would come and uh, just pray with me pray with me and then when i was done he said to me um what is wrong what what is happening and i remember that day that was um the first time i was speaking to a man that is not family but even with my brothers like we don't hug and cry and all that um and have a man old man like father age man um hold me and comfort me when i'm crying and this is a man that doesn't have any sexual interest in me but is old enough to be my father and he's talking about christ and he's saying to me don't worry it's all gonna be okay um you have been healed i told him that i have been suffering from um depression and drinking and not um, trying to comfort myself and he comforted me he prayed with me and he held me i remember that hug um and i remember just being so relieved and so calm and with a strong sense of relief and feeling like I had been healed, yo. But I remember he didn't lead me to Christ. He just comforted me and just prayed for me. But I started to go to that church and I would resist when they called people forward to to renew their, um, to do the prayer and get restored back into their faith or just become born again for the first time if they, they, they felt that. I just would ignore that and I would pray and started to go to Bible study and all that. A few weeks later, Two weeks later i relapsed uh, i had another party night and then afterwards <laughs> i'm like i get more quiet it's like like and then i go back again to church i cry and i pray about it i don't even say anything to the pastor i go to service with everyone and then um <sighs> i'm driving now to work from my place and Angus Backen is on the radio he talks um, he shares the word of God and uh, he shares that scripture behold I am doing a new thing do you perceive it it springs forth and I just saw my life rewritten I saw a life of peace and um, no struggle just peace which happens to be the life that I live now I remember at the time I was struggling with my child as well financially. I didn't have um, enough money. I was just barely getting by. Um, but I just, God just opened um, a window to me of a life of abundance and a life of no lack and a life of no numbing of pain and an alcohol free life. Um, a life of inspiring other women, a life of... Oh, when I think about it, this is my life now. And that is the life that was revealed to me at the time um, Angus Backen was on the radio that day. I stopped on the side of the road. Um, he had done a prayer leading someone to... I had to go and recollect myself because I was ugly crying. <laughs> So um, God did reveal to me a window of a new life of uh, peace and comfort and um, one of the issues that were, like I was saying on the previous clip, um, one of the issues I was struggling with at the time with the drinking and all that um, was financially. I was not doing so well financially. I had my job which was an entry level job and I didn't have any other side hustle so money was really tight um, and I was not able to provide fully to the level that I, I, I knew I, I wished I could for me and my son. I was really trying. He never felt it but I felt I was pressed. Um, and I remember at a time I was in so much debt um, 
but it was not like yeah it was it was foolish debt um, the rent was always paid his fees was always paid uh but the money for the nails and the hair uh, that would be a struggle um so i relied on like a things like girlfriends and girlfriend allowances and all that from the time I was in a relationship but now things were really tight um, even for the money for going out you know I would, I would be short but interestingly I would always get people offer me alcohol at the time and you know friends beautiful friends um, but that would always come through for me for drinking and um, partying but on the things that I felt like okay this were like of importance to me um, I was struggling I would struggle with getting my nails done and all that but I would always push even if I'm borrowing money from Wonga yes I've been trying to remember this thing there was something called Wonga that I would take money from and do things so it was just that tight tight life and then God revealed this thing to me of um, me actually being in a good place financially and just inspiring a lot of women um, shortly afterwards um, that uh, salvation prayer I started to talk about it now that ah, now I'm born again and I'm really grateful I was starting to open up some more because I feel like in all those times that I would suffer in silence I would backslide it was out of being isolated and not talking about the decision I had taken and still remaining around the same circles where I was just still fighting to keep up with the salvation thing but I'm also still trying to remain the same person that my people are used to and you know just living that double life this time around I literally started to isolate and um, be with my son and go to church I was going to church literally five th five times a week <laughs> because I, I had just seen what God had promised me the ultimate freedom that I need and I loved how I felt when I'm in church hey eh? I loved the feeling I participated in everything and um, corporate fasting corporate prayers and I just started to feel a person that I had always um, envisioned myself being I felt it manifest I felt that God had uh, caused it to come to pass for me to feel that way and this one time on the financial front um, I started to also learn more about tithing and stewardship and um, planting seeds I would, I would like I was opening up now this relationship I had with money of thinking that oh well I don't have money I am struggling I'm barely getting by I started to be released from that thinking and I just started to feel myself become something else you know I started even to to look different I don't know I just I just would look at myself in the mirror or maybe I was just then waking up to the reality that wow girl you know <laughs> so I started to feel a different way about myself how I look how I spoke and you know it was just like waking up to the person I've always been but seeing them on a different and elevated manner which is something that I now know to be stemming from the transformation of my mind and me starting to see myself the way God sees me and starting to be a forgiving person that being gracious with myself even with the past that I had and um, the issues that I had had I started to look at myself different dif differently and you know just being proud of how far I had come and being grateful to God for what he had done for me at that particular moment and the fact that he had carried me throughout all these seasons even in the time I was not as faithful as I had said I would be all those years ago when he delivered me from epilepsy and just to backtrack a little bit at the depth of my um, partying and drinking sprees I remember when I'm at a club, if I were to, if I if I caught a glimpse of myself and be in contact with myself, I would literally want to cry again because I would look at the mirror and God would say to me in my head that what are you doing here? You don't belong here. And um, it got so bad to a point where I would avoid going to the bathroom alone um, and I would act like I'm scared of going alone I remember like it was a bit of a fancy fancy club this one time my friend even asked me hey, but why would you be scared of going to the bathroom alone when it's so safe and beautiful here and I knew that I was running away from the voices that would group me if I am to make contact with myself and look at myself in the mirror 
hours that I'm going free literally all the time um, when we come back I'll start to pray I'll start to cry crying out to the Lord um, so yeah man God has carried me through many rough seasons um, and then shortly after this I one encounter that has led to the present um, with the with Angus back in and just immersing myself in prayer. I went for a prayer with this friend of mine in a mountain that we used to pray in. Um, we went there, we prayed, and I, I remember I I made um, a deal with God that at least if I can have just an extra 3,000 rands a month, okay, please, can I just have that? Show me a way I can have that. If you're not gonna give me a job now then um, just give me that so that I don't feel the need to be trying all these things and I'm tired of being in debt and shortly afterwards God um, redirected my thoughts towards um, makeup which became my financial breakthrough um, bridging the gap in all the financial gaps I had at the time and so continues to be my bread you know um, God didn't give me mana. God is very creative. He will not um, create the same um, miracle uh, over and again. He did it over and over again. He didn't throw me money mana, but he did remind me of the gift of my hands. And I didn't have to do anything or I didn't have to date someone I didn't want to date for a girlfriend allowance. <laughs> And with that, he even gave me a name for my business and he just completely restored me through Anointed Beauty Zone. Completely restored me. And actually, when I look at it now, I know that God will start with everything else that might affect the way he is taking me. Because I've always known how to do makeup. I've always had style. I could have had a thriving YouTube career but he wanted me to have his message as the main thing, as the main thing that um, is going to draw people to me. He wanted me to have a testimony for me to have the platform. And even with the makeup, I've always known how to do makeup. Um, but when I was in the wilderness, um, he never made it clear to me that that is where uh, my financial breakthrough would come from because he knew that at the time I was struggling. How was I going to wake up for my clients at 4 a.m. when they're getting married? How was I going to be able to boldly pray for them and stand in the gap when they are feeling down? How was I going to be able to bring um, young women into the kingdom of God even on this platform that is YouTube if I hadn't had um, all those ups and downs and then eventually come to him. I'm grateful for each and every hurdle Even the, the, the parts that bring me to tears now. It's not out of shame or it's just out of a deep gratitude and an understanding of the depth of how deep things had been and Realizing the fact that um, if it had not been for the Lord, I'd be dead right now and I'm not um, and I thank God that um, I'm not the girl now. I was able to say, hey, Bandla, if anything, I'm going from glory to glory. And that's glory to God for that. Um, thank you so much for watching um, this testimony of mine. And um, I'm going to attach a playlist of uh, some of the music that has carried me through even my darkest seasons uh, because I find that worship is the one way that many of us even when we are far from the grace of god um just even singing along to a worship song we are worshiping god uh those are the seasons that carried me and um i want to list to you just three of the songs that have been really significant in my journey um it has been Benjamin Dube. Benjamin Dube carried me through so many seasons when I couldn't pray. I would just play that song and just worship God and leave him a heart of heart. Hot Down by Benjamin Dube. That song carried me through a lot of many sleepless nights. I'll just play that until I fall asleep. I'll be crying and just I believe in my heart now that my spirit was just crying out to God at the time. And that has been my prayer bank, you know, <laughs> that carried me even through the seasons I couldn't pray. That song by, who's it by? All the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God 
I feel that song uh, really describes uh, my journey with God. These songs are based on scripture. I'm not bringing in scripture. Um, I'm hoping that this is going to touch someone who doesn't even know scripture. I'm hoping that you get to understand God through this conversation and through those songs and then dig deeper into him by reading the word for yourself. But I just want to keep it as, as open and honest as, as possible. I don't want to open anything for now we're going to continue with this kind of conversations but i just want it to be that and another song for me has been you waited by um travis green travis green travis green um you you waited for me just for me for me that song it describes how obama doesn't give up on us he waits on us and he searches for us and I just pray that if you're watching this and God has been seeking you in many different ways that you finally heed that call and you accept him today. Um, I had to be very honest with this uh, with this journey with you to make you understand that it is possible to fall but you will have to get up and ultimately God's plan for you is to get up and stand for him and him alone. He will straighten every crooked way out of you. You just need to lean in and trust him fully. God doesn't need help saving you. He alone can save you. And yeah, we're going to wrap it here. I just want to pray for you. Um, if you're watching this and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's very easy. It's very simple. I want you to just believe in your heart of hearts, even if you don't understand what what this is, how this is going to pan out, pan out for you. Or you know the way but you have fallen on the side way it's time for restoration it's time to go back to god go back to your father go quiet to your father i'm gonna pray a prayer and after this prayer you will be a child of god you don't need to undergo anything else any other affirmation from anyone else by just praying this prayer and believing it in your heart and saying it with your mouth you will have been saved father in the name of jesus thank you for this moment thank you for this reminder of your love for us we honor we glorify you we worship your holy name you are the king of kings lord of lords we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that is jesus christ that was made for us right now i lift up my sister and my brother that is watching this video and has decided that above everything else they choose you in this world they're committing their lives in the name of jesus bless them as they pray after me this prayer amen heavenly father i come to you as a sinner but i trust and i believe that you died and rose for my sin i thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you made on my behalf and today i take it up as the lifeline I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Take me, transform my life, make me brand new. Heavenly Father, I allow your Holy Spirit to dwell within me, to lead me, to direct me. In Jesus Christ's name, thank you that I'm born again. Amen. With that simple prayer, you are now a child of God. You are born again. I would highly advise you to celebrate this moment by telling at least five people this decision that you have taken and then take the time to write down a letter to your father. Just put it out to him how you feel about this journey, what your fears are, what your excitement is about taking on this journey. And lastly, please look for a church locally that you can visit and form a community in it's very important to have a place to fellowship to have brothers and sisters who will pray with you pray for you and uphold you in times of need just be ready for a new life that god is going to usher into you right now thank you so much for watching today's video i love you god bless you i'll see you on my next one bye